a, or that we hear a lot, kind of a just a really common misconception, is people who end up being diagnosed with osteopenia and osteoporosis in particular. Most of the time, if they've really, if they've, if they've taken care of themselves and they've been really physically active, they're very shocked when they get that diagnosis. Um, how could this have happened? I already exercise. I'm really, really active. I walk all the time. I swim. I do yoga. You know, I do bar classes. I'm on the treadmill. That kind of stuff. We hear that a lot. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions out there is all forms of exercise have their purpose. All forms of exercise will help with certain body systems. So walking and running are fantastic cardiovascular exercises. So they're great for strengthening your heart. They're great for flexibility. They're great for strengthening your respiratory system. They're not the best for muscular strength and bone density. And we'll get into that in just a second. Same thing, swimming and biking, phenomenal. Um, for the, the same thing, walking and running is great. We do great cardiovascular, great for flexibility, great for endurance, um, great stress reduction, great for sleeping. But those are what we call unloaded exercises. So there's no, there's no load on the bones. There's no load on the musculoskeletal system. So i.e. there's no resistance against those tissues to stimulate growth. So backing up, in physical medicine or just in, in healthcare in general, we've known for a very long time, um, really since the 1800s, that muscles and bones respond in growth, um, respond with load or resistance placed against them. So the more of a compressive force or the more resistance there is against those tissues is how muscles get stronger and how bones get stronger. So we've known that for a very, very long time. And so that's why we always say be, you know, be physically active, be out there. You know, the more you sit on the couch, the more you do unloaded things, the weaker you're going to get. And that only accelerates the older you get. We've already covered that kind of peak bone mass. So it really wasn't until about 2012 that a group of researchers set out to discover, okay, if we know that muscles and bones respond to loads placed upon them, exactly what does that mean? How much is that? Because if all it takes is walking or all it takes is going for a light jog or all it takes is lifting some five pound weights or doing some yoga, why are we having people getting weaker and weaker as they're getting older and now to the point of being diagnosed with osteopenia, osteoporosis, bone density issues? If that's all it takes, it doesn't make any sense. And what they actually found is to stimulate bone growth and muscular development, myofibril um, development inside the muscle tissue, it takes a minimum of 4.2 multiples of your body weight in your hips, which is the most common fracture site. That's the fracture site with osteoporosis that we get really concerned about. But it takes a minimum of 4.2 multiples of your own body weight of load, of compressive force, continuous, repetitive, compressive force to stimulate osteogenesis or new bone growth, what you're just going to naturally be losing, especially postmenopausal. That's a significant amount of weight. Um, so if you weigh 150 pounds, I mean, we're talking six, 700 pounds of pressure in the hip joints and in, in the legs of the bones in order to stimulate that osteogenesis over and above. So that's, if you're a member here, you know, on that first machine, that's what we're looking for. That's what, that's our, that's what we call our growth trigger is that 4.2 minimum, um, dose response, minimum growth trigger to stimulate that bone growth. That's why it's so difficult for people to maintain and build bone density just in everyday life because about the only, conventionally, about the only types of exercise where you're going to be doing that consistently is like gymnastics or powerlifting. And of course, when you're younger, gymnastics and powerlifting is reasonable. Although there's a high rate of injury and gymnastics especially is really hard on your joints. But of course, as you get older, it starts to become much, much, much more difficult to do those types of exercises. And so that's really where the osteostrong system, the spectrum system, um, is unique in so many ways. You know, it allows, obviously you, if you're a member, you know this, but it allows you to load in every region of the body the amount of multiples of body weight, the amount of, of force, the amount of force in pounds 
to be able to stimulate that osteogenesis, that, that osteoblastic activity. So it's a beautiful thing, but that's one of the things that our members are, you know, what is that? No, how is this different? You know, remind me again, what are these growth triggers and how is this different? You know, why can't I just walk? Or you know, why can't I, if I go out for a light run? So we also know um, some common exercises, kind of how much of a load is on the uh, musculoskeletal system. So I'm gonna have um, that, a graphic of that posted below as well in the comments for you to take a look at. But like walking, um, you of course biking and swimming is unloaded, so that's, that's less than one multiple of your body weight. Walking is about one to 1.3 multiples of your body weight. If you really stomp and power walk, you can get up to that 1.5 range. You know, running is typically anywhere from two to three multiples of your body weight. So even if you're running, you're not gonna reach that 4.2 multiples of your body weight. Gymnastics and powerlifting, and then of course the spectrum system, the osteogenic loading that we do here at OsteoStrong, will get you upwards of that four multiples of body weight. 